Hi, I'm Matthew Clausen with Medigapseminars.org. In this video, I want to keep our viewers updated with what we see happening with Medicare Supplement Plan F and Medicare Supplement Plan C as of the year 2020. Keep in mind, some of the issues affecting these changes are still in committee, so there, there can be changes to what we're presenting now. But what we have now is as of May 2016. We will be updating if we get new information, so please, if you would like to keep updated on the videos, then subscribe to our channel. Go to YouTube, use your YouTube account to subscribe to this channel. That way, when we have videos updating this topic, you will be notified. Now, anyone who has been researching Medicare may already know that in April 2015, the Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act was voted on and passed with a bipartisan effort by the Senate and signed into law by the President. And I want to emphasize it was a bipartisan effort in the Senate. We have a lot of comments from people asking me if uh, you know, this is going to change with the new President. It was a bipartisan effort in the Senate. It's very unlikely that this law will be reversed. Now, the law makes a number of changes to Medicare, but among them is an effort to reduce Medicare costs by eliminating those Medicare supplements that have what's called first dollar coverage. First dollar coverage is when you can go to a, a doctor or have any Medicare service without having to pay any deductible at all. In the United States, we have 10,000 people turning 65 every day and that pace is going to continue for more than a decade ahead. One thing is certain is that Medicare will change from the way it is now to the way that it will be 10 years from now. There will probably be many incremental changes. That should be expected. My role is to keep my clients updated on those changes with how they're going to affect their health care, how it will affect their prices, how it will affect them in, in any way whatsoever. Among the 11 different Medicare supplement plans, only two plans have first dollar coverage, and that's Medigap Plan F and Medigap Plan C. Now, I know a lot of people will say, well, there are only 10 different Medicare supplement plans. I consider the Medicare supplement Plan F high deductible to be a separate plan, as do many who actually own that high deductible. And that high deductible is impacted on this, and so we're going to update that in, in, as well here in just a moment. Here's what's happening. As of January 1, 2020, no new Medicare enrollees may be able to purchase Plan F, Medigap Plan C, or the Medigap Plan F high deductible. If you are eligible for Medicare Part A, prior to January of 2020, then you may still purchase any of those plans. If you already own a plan, if you already own a Plan F, Plan C, a Plan F high deductible, you don't need to do anything. You're grandfathered. No one can make you change your Medicare supplement policy. No one can make you do anything with it. You, it the insurance company is obligated to hold up to its part of the contract as long as you pay the premiums. So again, if you're eligible for Medicare Part A prior to January 1 of 2020, then you may still be able to purchase Plan F, Plan C, and the Plan F high deductible. Only those who become eligible for Medicare on or after January 1 of 2020 cannot purchase those plans. So what does this mean? Well, according to some of the latest statistics by Mark Farah and Associates, in 2015, 67% of all Medicare supplements that were purchased were Plan F. Of all the outstanding Medicare supplement plans, 55% of them are a Plan F and 8% of them are a Plan C. That means that 63% of all outstanding Medicare supplement plans are either a Plan F or a Plan C, and that most of the plans that are purchased each and every year have been, so far, a Plan F. Once 
January 2020 comes around, then that pool of people who are eligible to purchase the Plan F becomes locked. And those who are eligible will become slowly older. And as they become older, they will also statistically have higher needs or higher Medicare needs. And keep in mind that Medicare has already said that those people who have Plan F and Plan C, first dollar coverage, tend to spend more on their health care. And that's why this rule came about, is that people who are on the first dollar coverage plans tend to spend more on their health care in both necessary and unnecessary services. So as a group, they spend more, they're getting older, and there are going to be fewer and fewer of them over time. Now, how does this impact the price? That nobody knows. It's an uncertainty. And that's an uncertainty, however, that you, if you are seeking to purchase a Medicare supplement plan, should at least be aware of. So we don't know exactly how it's going to unfold. I do believe that those people who are managing this process are going to try to do it in a way that is the least disruptive to the Medicare market. What we do know is that whether or not Plan F is the right plan for you is going to depend on you. It's going to depend on your needs, your budget, where you live, and the plans that are available to you, and at what price those plans are that are available to you. We believe and we encourage everyone who is entering the Medicare supplement market to shop at least the Medigap Plan F, Medigap Plan N, Medigap Plan G, and take a look at the Medigap Plan F High Deductible. Which would be the better value for you? Well, if you shop at least one of those plans, you'll, you'll probably find one of them may be the better value for you. In some areas, Plan G is certainly a better value than Plan F, just on a mathematical basis. For those who know the Plan G, and we have plenty of articles and videos on the website about them, the, plan, the only difference between a Plan G and a Plan F is that with the Plan G, you pay that Medicare Part B deductible. The Medicare Part B deductible is $166 a year as of 2016. So the only difference in benefit between a Plan G and a Plan F is $166. But Plan G is often $250, $300 less than a Plan F in premiums. So you can pay that deductible and, and pocket the change. There are some states that have state laws that make Plan N a better value. And again, we have plenty of articles and videos on the website about that. So understand that there's some uncertainty with Plan F and Plan C in the future. But shop, use the same process to shop and come up with the right decision for you. Now, I was handed the other day a, uh, a Medicare benefit table. Uh, we often show one of these on the uh, uh, the website. Well, this benefit table is the projected benefit table for 2020. It may change, uh, but still, let's take a quick look at it and show you what the thought process and what the changes uh, may be. So this table, again, uh, I want to stress this is a preliminary table that was uh, as of, and this says on the top, uh, benefit chart as of January 1, 2020. And you can see that they've taken Medigap Plan F and Medigap Plan C and put them off separately at the table to the right. And it says the Medicare, uh, Medicare recipients first eligible before 2020. So those who were eligible for Part A before 2020 can still purchase the Plan C and the Plan F. The other plans all look the same except for one thing, and it's the uh, little one you have here on the top of uh, Plan F. And if you come over to the left, the one on the top of Plan G, and they come down, and let's read what that says. It refers to, of course, the high deductible plans. It says Plans F and G also have high deductible options, which requires first paying a plan deductible of $2,180, in parentheses, we'll talk about that in a second, before the plan begins to pay. Once the plan deductible is met, the plan pays 100% of covered services for the rest of the calendar year. High deductible plan G does not cover the Medicare Part B deductible. However, high deductible plans F and G count your payment of the Medicare Part B deductible towards meeting the plan deductible. 
Wow. What that means is that the only difference between a plan F high deductible and a plan G high deductible is the name. They are exactly the same benefits. And keep in mind, it says plan G does not cover the part B deductible as plan G doesn't. However, we're going to consider it when we consider the high deductible that you have to meet. There's no difference in the plans. That that's very encouraging, and for those who are in the high deductible or those considering it, uh, especially those in Florida where it's a, it usually a very attractive plan, it means really that this change will probably have absolutely no impact on your plan. Not because the, as far as the insurance company is concerned, it's the same people, the same benefit, just a different name. Let's get back to that $2,180 deductible for just one moment. That deductible can change. However, it is written in to Social Security law and it is attached to your Social Security cost of living increases. The deductible for a high deductible plan can only increase at a rate equal to or less than the increases in your Social Security cost of living adjustments. So there you have it. Again, none of this is written in stone. Uh, we will be, if we get new information, if we see something substantial change, we will be presenting another updated video. If you use your YouTube account to subscribe to this channel, then you will be updated. You'll be notified when we have an update. Now, if you found this information of benefit, if you find a video like this helpful, chances are others will too. So please help me help them. If you would simply press that thumbs up, the, the like button below, the more often that people press the like button, the more likely it is that someone else like you searching for answers about Medicare will find this video. I'm Matthew Clausen with Medigapseminars.org. Thank you for watching.